hello everyone and welcome back to my channel for episode 7 of Bumbling Through Birthright, which is actually a really interesting episode because I went away for a week and I missed a session. If this is your first time here or you're not caught up, make sure to check out the link down below and right here so you can do so. Otherwise, let me just get you caught up on what happened while it's gone. Or at least the Cliff Notes version of it because I didn't write down a lot. So the major thing that happened is that there was unrest and strikes in one of the adjacent provinces. The people weren't paying their taxes because they were being told not to. The Jarl was just drunk. And then he wasn't drunk because he locked himself in his longhouse and he didn't have enough booze to supply him being stuck there for that long. And the Black Swan, who were like a mercenary group, were basically being paid to run the city. And I mean by extension, run the province. So the Hauling Holman, they went up there and they dealt with everything. Brindis decided to make the Black Swan knights of the country because that's all they really wanted. They wanted some recognition, they wanted to be knights, they wanted to walk around in their shiny fancy metal and so they got that and so they were fine and then they also found out that it was the white witch that lives nearby that was funding the black swan and she has been causing us problems like left right and center so that's something to deal with later. Instead of installing a new Jarl, they decided to make the guilds in charge. So basically there's going to be a government composed of guilds and they'll elect who they want to be their leader. But that's later. Right now they've got provisional government in place and the adventurers came back to Holling Holman. So for this session, there were four players. You got Raz, Rinalfa, Brindis, and Val. And while the other players did a domain turn on the last time, I'm not really sure what they did. Rinalfa and Raz weren't around, so we needed to do our domain turns. So Raz, with the help and funding of Brindis, was looking for a source for his magic because he's got to figure out this whole narcophilia thing. Remember, don't look that up. And so, what better than to have like an actual research place? Doesn't go so well, Roz doesn't find a place, so waste of money, but that's the way the dice roll. But I'm sure he'll figure something out later. Renolfer decides to split his domain turns up into four weeks. Also, he missed a week of downtime, so technically he has five weeks. So the first week he goes and does religious service, and he does religious service so good that he like gets a favor from the priest. Then he goes gambling, because Renolfer has a gambling problem. And he wins a fair amount of money, like a lot of money. And he wants to build a church, and he needs 2,000 gold pieces, so he's getting close. So then he goes and he does more religious service. And that goes amazing too. And he goes and he gambles. And that goes great. And he is within 300 gold pieces of being able to fund his church. But then he's got that one last week of downtime. Now, Brindis is gonna pay us. So we're gonna make money for being part of her adventuring squad. So Renalfer doesn't need to gamble to get this money. He's gonna get this money from the queen. But Renalfer has a gambling problem. So Renalfer gambles, not just the 300 that he needs to get up to the 2,000. No, he gambles 600 because then even if he only wins two of his checks, he still gets the 300 all as well. He could come out on top. I think you can probably guess where this is going. Maybe you can't because it was like absolutely terrible. Not only did Renalfer lose the 600 gold pieces that he put in, but he accrued a debt of a further 600 gold pieces. So he went from like almost having enough to do his temple to like having 400 gold pieces left. So the queen then paid him, so that brought it up a bit, but he still couldn't afford to do his temple. So this was actually from a previous domain turn of his because he had missed out on two domain turns. So he still has one full domain turn, so either four weeks or a month to do something. And his plan was to build his church in this time, but that kind of fell flat. But the crazy wizard, who used to be super poor, is no longer super poor, and had the funds to lend the money to Renalfer. Because, I mean, Ross is a traveler. He's not too concerned about having cash, so whatever. Let him have his little church over there. So we spend a month going back and forth and back and forth because Renalfer has found a place to build his church, and it's right near where Val is building a shipyard in, like, the adjacent province. I can't remember what it's called. It starts with an H, and there's a lot of wood there. Hauling, Hollingham. Let's go with that. 
Anyway, while they're going back and forth for this month, they do see like this old deserted road that's kind of headed down towards the beach. During his religious service, Rinaldo had had a dream about a lighthouse, so you know, maybe there's a lighthouse down there. Also, Roz is feeling like there's magic. So we all make our way down this road, we get to a beach, and lo and behold, there is a lighthouse there. Roz wants to check it out because that's pretty cool. And as we get closer, the one and only Rolf, who is the leader of the Sons of Eric, which is a terrorist organization, shows up. And he's all like, hey, Rinaldo, are you coming to my side? You brought me the queen. And he's like, that's not the queen, also no. So we end up getting into a fight because the two of these people cannot see eye to eye. Rinaldo and Rolf both have different sides of their religion and they're, they're not gonna become friends. So the fight starts, there are eight little mini bad guys and then Rolf. Rolf seems to be the biggest issue though. And so like we start playing, but also Eric is putting his hand in this. So every once in a while the waters and the waves come up and tries to grab someone and bring them out to the ocean, or at least trip them up and drag them out a bit. Ah, <sighs> fun times. Also, every time Roz makes the magic, he has to do a check to see 50-50 which way it goes. And every single time Roz made the check is a plus minus, which is great because if he had failed it, then weird wild magic would have come out because the magic in this area is super untamed. Meanwhile, in this fight, the cultists, like the extra little minions, are going down pretty quickly, but Rolf and Rinaldo are just going back and forth. Rolf gets dragged out to sea and he's all like, Eric pulled me away from you. And then Rinaldo is like running out, splashing to get to him, to murdelate him. Which he does! <laughs> so that eventually is the end of the Sons of Eric, or at least the head of the beast is cut off. So hopefully we won't have to deal with them anymore, but I'm sure we will. Next we go into the lighthouse. It seems like it's old elven construction, and Roz remembers from the map that he had taken from that dwarven place that, hey, this is where there was old elven runes, and maybe that's also telling me where there's a source, so if I look at the map maybe I'll find more sources which could be super helpful for a wizard to have more sources. So we go inside the lighthouse and we find Rolf's prayer book and inside he has notes and one of them says Jürgen, who was the head of the Abbey of Eric in Hollingholmen, supplies, so as in he's giving him supplies. And money is coming from Sill and Sill is the realm of the White Witch, who if you remember from the beginning when I was recapping the session that I wasn't there for, the White Witch was the one that was funding the Black Swan. So. We're probably gonna have to go deal with her because she is just getting her weird warty fingers up in our grill. So we keep the note that says this and we give it to Brindis, like here, here's your proof that Rolf was being a jerk. And then we take the prayer book to the police and we're like, Rolf is dealt with, here you go. Also, can you take the credit for this? Because Brindis really isn't supposed to get involved in religious things because she's the queen and we don't want any complications, so please deal with that. So now we're back in Hollingholm and and we happen to walk past the Church of Holm, and it is just, the construction is going terribly, probably because it's like brutes that are working on, not actual construction workers. Arlo, who is the new head of the Abbey of Eric in the city, finally comes across Rinaldo, he's been looking for him, he's like, can we talk? And he knows that we killed Jürgen, and he's just asking Rinaldo, like, if it was hard for him to do that, because Arlo suspected Jürgen of being up to no good, but he didn't really know what to do about it, and he doesn't think he could have killed him. And so now he's going to more actively work to try to make sure that these rebel factions and stuff don't rise up, so that nobody's ever put in this situation again. He's also kind of feeling a little bit of a sense of guilt, so, you know, that's probably a good thing to have someone like that in charge of the church, so hopefully there won't be any more issues. Then, you know, we've been gone for a while, so we make our way back up to the castle, and you guessed it, it's time for petitioners. So the first petitioners that come up are a local man and a Canassi, which is kind of cool because I'm a Canassi. I love Canassi. So basically the Canassi is trying to buy property from this guy and this guy's like, no, you're a foreigner, get out of my country. I don't have to sell you property. And that's exactly what Brenda says. Like, you know, we can't force him to sell you property. So I'm sorry, but that's his choice. I asked the Canassi whose name is able to stay after we're done with the petitioners so we can figure out a course of action to get him some property, hopefully. Then Lady Thora, who is the ambassador for Spinnick, and Kane, who is the ambassador for the Bandit Kingdom, they show up and they have an issue. They tried to set up a trade agreement with horses and it kind of went super south, and so they want Brindis's input and whatever Brindis says, as a neutral party, they will take. 
So the setup was supposed to be this. Spinnick wanted 100 horses. The normal price for 100 horses is 750 GP. The Bandit Kingdom had the horses to supply and they said, you know, we'll give you a deal, 700 GP, 400 horses. And they're like, that's great, we love a deal. But when the horses show up, it's 80 horses that show up and 20 mules. But the Bandit Kingdom is like, we'll only take 650 GP, we'll give you a deal because we gave you mules. But they're not having that. So we did a lot of math and a lot of negotiating back and forth because you know, like the 700 GP was the reduced price because you're buying in bulk, blah, 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 blah. So we figured it out. 80 horses, no mules, keep your mules, for 580 GP. Everybody was happy, the trade is made, but the Bandit Kingdom, they're kind of being jerks, so this could come back to haunt us at some point. Speaking of the Bandit Kingdom, we do have an ambassador named Vardigan that we sent up there. He sent us a raven, so we go into the private chambers to find out what this raven's message says, and he says that in the capital of Viborg, there are two people in charge because the bandit king is never there, he's always on the coast because water, it's pretty. And um, so there's two people in charge, one is this big brutish fighter, and the other one is a fell wizard. His name is Karem Eldim, and he is a Kanasi. And now the thing with Kanasi is you either take a vow or you don't take a vow when you're a wizard, and Roz has taken this vow that necromancy and all this stuff is wrong. And even if this other guy has taken that vow, he's obviously broken the vow. But there's also part of this vow where if you find out wizards are doing that crap, you gotta go kill them. So now Roz has to go take care of this. <sighs> but that is definitely a problem for the other day. Right now, Abel is still there, the other Kanasi, a good Kanasi, just wants to buy some land. So Roz suggests to him that he go and talk to Sten, who is Jans' like right-hand man, and see if he can help facilitate acquiring land. And meanwhile, Renolfer's like just challenge him to a whole game, which is like just fight for honor kind of thing. But that still doesn't mean that he has to give him property or let him buy property. And Roz also says, you know, I, there's this warehouse that I use. I got some kids staying there. You're welcome to go stay there while you figure yourself out. And that's the end of that session. So we found out a lot of things. We got rid of Renolfer's like arch enemy. So I think, I think we're doing all right. I don't think anything that happened today was gonna have like crazy, super bad consequences later, but you never know. So then after we dealt with the petitioners, we like teleport it to a different part of the country and not like our actual characters. But one thing about Birthright is you do have battles sometimes, like field battles. And so part of our wall was being attacked. People were trying to get into, I think it was Arvald. I'm probably wrong. I know that they're coming out of Dankmar because it's a really funny name. Anyways, they were trying to get in. It was raiders from Riorvik, which is the bandit kingdom, and they wanted to get in. Probably an act of desperation because apparently they're hungry. We, d we don't know for sure what the situation is in there. We know what the situation is in Viborg because we have an ambassador there, but for the rest of the country we're not sure. But it was like full-on battle time. It was kind of neat because you like, you have a commander and then you all talk about it and then you just kind of hope for the best and we decimated them. So that's good. So that's not a problem. We barely lost any people and we took out all of them. That'll probably have ramifications later, if not from the Bandit King, but definitely within our own kingdom. Because even though we're trying to be diplomatic with them, if we're getting attacked, there's a chance we're gonna have to go to war. But to find out if that happens or not, you better make sure that you subscribe so you'll know when I post the next video and find out what's happening. And with that, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.